Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of all of us at SKP, it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome, to you, welcome you to this financial results conference call of X Macro Reels and Engineering Limited. We have with us Mr. Indrajit Mukherjee, Managing Director, along with his colleagues, Mr. A.K. Vijay, Executive Director of Finance, Mr. Himant Bhuvania, VP Corporate Finance, and Mr. Ravi Verma, GM Corporate Affairs and Company Secretary. We will have the opening remarks from Mr. Vijay, followed by a question and answer session. Over to you, Mr. Vijay, for your opening remarks. Thank you. Thanks, Naveen. And good morning to all the investors, all the investing fraternity who have shown interest in the company. We have been interacting with you regularly. Of course, maybe during the last year when the pandemic was there, our interaction had been slightly low. But then since we never expected that the pandemic will come back in such a manner, whereby again we will be totally working from home and we will come down to lockdown to the states. But then, of course, this is a way of life we are understood. And accordingly, now we are gearing up ourselves irrespective of the situation which is there in this, we are able to float and make, make some headway. And that's what basically we are trying to do in this company also. So with this opening remark, I'd like basically first to present you what the results have been. And thereafter, uh, I'll give you a brief commentary on how the company is basically done in the past year. And then I'll open the session for the question and answer, which will be very happy to reply to all of your queries. So as the results you have already seen in your hands, we have gradually after the uh, ep uh, pandemic and epidemic that is uh, this COVID-19 cause, and thereafter another disaster which came in the form of Amphan in this region of uh, country. And as a result, that thing, the, especially the Kolkata region suffered very badly. We have been able to perform reasonably well from second half of quarter two. First half was total washout. Second half, first few months, we could do just nothing. From the third month onwards, we started gearing up ourselves. And if you see the performance in the quarter two, three, and four, we have gradually climbed up. So that's how that is the target we thought of maintaining this year also from quarter four to quarter one and accordingly maintain the year. But quarter one again is a disaster for the reason that we are under complete lockdown. The plants are not allowed to be operated. The Another, the major issue which arose and which any engineering company has to face and they have to really uh, come out with some very innovative solutions on that is we have not been provided with any oxygen. And uh, to an uh, engineering company to run without an oxygen, especially both my foundry as well as my fabrication shops, it's a nightmare. We are trying to overcome those situations also that how can we do without that also because this problem is going to last for a few months at least from now. So we have to learn to live without oxygen also. And whatever we can do, we try doing that thing by adopting some innovative means and methods. But once the lockdown is open, I will go full blast on this. So make sure that whatever we have lost in the quarter one, we are able to make up in quarter two, three, and four. Hopefully, no such disaster will be uh, looking forward to in the company. Maybe that COVID uh, that third, third phase also may be there. But then we by that time, we will be gearing up ourselves to face those challenges and come out in a manner whereby we can still provide, uh, give to our investors a reasonably satisfactory result. That's basically the situation is in quarter four, but my total income has been 619 crores. For the year, it is 1720 crores. And we have made an EBT of quarter four, we have done 32 crores, but because we have incurred huge loss in the quarter one, which was almost close to 40 crores, the year-ending profits before tax is restricted to 11 crore 60 lakhs. So that's what the basically result of the company was. Now I'll come basically on the division-wise and would like to brief you basically how the company has basically performed in its various division. The first which I mentioned to you, there was the lockdown which was induced by the central government and which lasted for a month and a half and thereafter, after the lockdown, the restriction which was imposed, whereby the factory was not allowed to operate, and we were only allowed in our factories to deploy 100 people. We employed nearly, today in the factory, 3,000 people. So we were permitted to operate the factory with only 100 people for a couple of months. As a result, gradually and gradually started building up the thing. We, as I mentioned, quarter one and part of quarter two was total washout. 
Thereafter, we started picking up. And in a given time, the performance, what we could achieve, was, I consider it to be satisfactory. And hopefully, immediately after this lockdown, we'll gear up again and make sure that our performance for the current year also is maintained on the same pattern. The performance of rolling stock division, which is the main division of the company, shown signs of recovery. Initially, it was sluggish, but then we showed signs of recovery. And we are basically thankful to the customers for showing their support during the difficult year by reissuing their deliveries, which was a real challenge because we commit, the commitment of delivery, which was there in the month of April, May, June, July, August, couldn't be maintained for the reason that there was no production. Now, nonetheless, once the this was over, this was the uh, the pandemic situation improved and it opened up. We started delivering them and all those things. And as a result, under new schemes, private sector orders and things, it started coming to us also. Of course, there was not much, uh, no fresh or uh, tender was released by railway board, which was overdue. But nevertheless, we we relied on the private sector. And under new railway schemes, whereby they are encouraging a lot of private players to come in and get under various schemes, we are able to maintain our reasonable order book. We closed the year with the order book almost about 2,000 items. And we are also booking fresh orders. So hopefully this year also, there should not be a major challenge to our rolling stock division per se in respect of items. In respect of local shelves, there was a challenge. This division we started a couple of weeks ago. We have been doing reasonably well. But last year, because of, again, this corona period and the non-finalization of uh, tenders and other orders, we couldn't get new orders. So we have we kept it low key, lower. But by the end of the year, the inquiries started floating in. And by this, by when I'm talking to you, we have already booked order for more than 70 to be delivered this year. And hopefully this year, we should be able to do much better compared to whatever we've done past, which was normally we were doing about 60, 65 local shells. The steel foundry division, in spite of that initial suffering and all these things, covered up and basically maintained its performance. Of course, it faced challenge in respect of the prices of scrap skyrocketing, commensurate to the prices of steel, which was going up so high. And this has actually caused profit to dip. But then, of course, we are getting into the near area, export and other, other fields, also getting into the defense field for hand molding casting through a new, new acquired unit of ULA. And these things are basically making us to make sure that the steel foundry division we can run comfortably and profitably. The other area where we really suffered was basically our division in respect of HME and bridges. Now, these divisions basically more rely upon the site working. And the site working position basically has suffered only because simple reason that people at sites were not available. All We all have heard about the immigrant problem and then how the immigrants went back from their respective place of work to their native places. And a big exodus took place at that point in time. And to bring them back to site and start working on all these things became a serious challenge. So this challenge we really faced in our HME and business division. Also, we faced the same challenge in our real APC division. Now, my real APC division also basically rely mainly on site working. And we have multiple sites where the people are working and there are almost about 4,000 people who work on the sites. And these people, once they go back, it is very difficult to bring them back to the site and all these things. So we really face serious challenge in all these things. So to cover up that, we tried that best that whatever supplies we can make, make the supply. We also changed the pattern of our order bookings. So we went in the shape whereby we are booking, we have started booking orders for our core competency area of signaling. We booked orders in small, small uh, your tenders where the volumes were 50 crores, 60 crores, like 70 crores. And those orders could be completed within one year where major course was supply and lesser part was of erection at site. So that's how we could manage some activity and we could show the performance which we have shown to you. That is, this division has done at almost 600 crores. So with this position, basically the company has tried to make up its position. They did its uh, best to make sure that even the given situation, we are able to do something. So that's how we are doing a real APC division. Now, in real APC division, there's another company called Bright Power. Bright Power, basically, we restrained ourselves. And now we are focusing more on this because all these challenges has actually made my liquidity to really suffer. And because of liquidity challenges and all this thing, we were not going in for larger orders this last year. And we are mainly focusing on the smaller orders. So Bright Power division also now getting into the near field of 
basically refurbishment maintenance and such areas the the time 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 slot is less time slot is less and the margins are completely better and the execution time is also short this requiring less amount of working capital so that is what basic com company has come to a situation where we have changed this our strategy about this thing so focusing more in real estate division on signaling we are focusing more on the basically auto pair collection division they their supplies are greater than the uh, site working and to some extent our core competency is there in the last less tracks which we are maintaining as far as the track link is concerned where the basically it is very labor intensive we have we have gone slow on that and we have not put any fresh orders as far as those that division is concerned so this is the rearrangement which we have done about in the company hopefully this strategy will augur well for the organization and we'll be able to balance ourselves and with these submission i would like you to ask any question which you would like to have in respect of operation of the company thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Bhagesh Sagalkar from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, can you quantify the uh, current order book division wise and in the wagons also the breakup of private and uh, public sector? What are the challenges in wagon execution of axles and wheel trains etc. and the outlook for margins because steel prices and etc. have risen. So what are the key parameters over here? Yeah, I, I'll give you the answer for the second part first. My colleague Hemant will give you the details in respect of the order book in for various divisions as well as for the private and railway orders. Challenges, you rightly mentioned about there are serious challenges because of the steel price and all this thing. The prices have skyrocketed. In fact, rather the steel prices are up in one year's time by almost about 50 to 60 percent, which is unprecedented. Never heard about. Fortunately for us, in respect of railway contracts. we have the variation clause so we are able to uh, pass on that cost increase back to the railways so we are protected to that extent in case of private parties normally the order the order deliveries are shorter they want deliveries in 3 to 6 months at the maximum and as a result normally they don't agree to giving you the price variation clauses so most of the private contracts are without pvc clauses we have that challenges faced by us but as you all know we have comparatively better margins in respect of private orders than the the railway orders so we are able to somehow sell through in those order also and the new order booking which we are doing of course that is being booked at the current current market trend and current market price of the steel so that we will be able to sustain and there would be serious challenge on the bottom line as far as the uh, order book is concerned eman now you can tell the details of the order book yes sure okay. thank you So the total order book as of March to date three thousand four hundred crores. So the breakup would be uh, wagon division has an order of around six hundred twenty-five crores. My EPC division has an order book of two thousand crores. My hydro mechanical and bridges division has an order book of three seventy-five crores. My steel foundry has an order book of two hundred crores. My locomotive have a, a locomotive shelves and other component has an order of hundred crores. Other subsidies and joint venture has an order of around hundred crores. In wagon division also, uh, as Vijay ji said that uh, we have an order of close to two thousand wagons. Uh, from Indian Railway, we have an order of around two hundred seventy five crores, and from private around three hundred fifty crores. So private book actually is bigger now. Yeah, private is private. bigger. Okay, and that's for the car carriers and application segments uh, which they are ordering. And the private uh, order book, uh, private sector wagon order book uh, is more better now from the logistics companies, etc., car carriers and all that things. Yeah, yeah, it is basically. I'll, I'll explain to you the private order books are basic. We were not booking because the price variations were getting so high and all these things. Of late, we started booking, and 
the order basically is now coming from all segments. Logistic, of course, is a major segment, which is giving the major order. But this apart, even the CTO companies are coming with the orders. So companies, basically, we are not buying the container wagons. They are also coming upon for the orders. Industry is also coming in a big way. The beat sale, beat ultra tech, beat uh, your NTPC. They all are coming out with the orders and all this thing. So private sector, the customer base has become very wide. It is not restricted to a few uh, particular segment of customers who are only buying. So that's a good sign in the wagon industry. Second part, which is important, this which you would like to know about, that railway wants to travel the freight movement by 2030. That is what the railway's plan is. Today, it is almost 1.1 to 1.2 billion uh, freight which is being carried, ton carried, freight which is being carried. The railway's plan is to increase to 3 billion tons in another nine years' time. So by 2030, that is the target of the railways. And to multiply this thing, of course, you don't require three times the population of wagon, but double the wagon population required. Today, the population is 2.68 lakhs of the railways. So naturally, railway will be looking for something, a population of almost six lakhs wagons. So it's a big, big market size. And railway, since don't have that much funds and all this thing, they will rely more and more on the private sector. And private sector, finding it very lucrative, are certainly getting into this thing. Like today, the iron ore prices are seeing a boom in the market. As a result, all the iron ore producers are looking for wagons to be available to them yesterday. So that's how basically the market goes about. But good thing about the demand in the railway sector is now widespread. And it is in the variety of rail industries, not merely restricted to some open type and closed type, or otherwise they're restricted to uh, container wagons or BTP wagons. Now, very variety. Steel plants are requiring the foil wagon, auto car requiring the auto carrier wagons, then uh, your of course, the fly ash wagon, fly ash required, the fly ash wagons. So it is now commodity specific wagons coming more and more in demand. Of course, they were there earlier, but not in that volume, which volume is now looking to. So it looks like that this segment should do well in the coming years. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Vijay, Vijay, this is uh, Indrajit Mukherjee. I just wanted to supplement uh, your, uh, your very well articulated answer by one more point is that there are lots of work going on in the company for improvement of internal efficiency, which really works out to reduction of wastage, quicker productivity, get it right first time, TQM, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought that I'll just mention that. Sir, sir, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kirti Jain from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, when you uh, say that the demand is improving, in the previous cycle, uh, we saw that uh, company can clock as high as 18 to 20 percent of uh, margin. Uh, sir, when do you expect uh, such golden days back for the company, sir? That's my question. Uh, <laughs> I would love to have that situation, and we all are waiting that kind of situation to emerge whereby we can make and give that those kind of returns to you. Of course, it will take some time because you see the, the, the this, this particular segment have been battered in the last couple of years. No orders from railways, order coming at highly competitive prices and all these things. So segment was badly battered and now situation is gradually improving. Of course, when the demand is good, the market is looking up, then you will find that industry cannot suddenly increase its capacity to supply a substantial quantity. But the prices also start improving and that we are going to see that in the coming future, maybe that we may wait, have to wait for one more year to come to that situation. Sir, there were earlier uh, predatory pricing, like we used to hear Jupiter, Amtec, all those names uh, creating predatory prices below cost and all. Has the situation gone off completely now? Uh, is the pricing now literally better? How will you describe the pricing, sir, now? I won't say completely, but like just like Amtec. Amtec has gone out of the business because they have lost heavily on this. Jupiter, of course. They initially were doing quite predatory prices and all this thing, but today they have changed that strategy because they have they become also an established supplier. So they, they don't need to do that predatory price to get the business. They are also getting their business. And the kitty is large. Everybody gets the business. Why should one go for predatory price? It's predatory prices situation come only in situation where the kitty becomes very small and everybody wants out of that kitty their major share. So this situation is likely to be changed and with more and more uh, opening up to the private sector by the railways, situation will be different than what it used to be earlier when companies were merely depending upon the railway orders. 
Okay. So what would be the uh, industry uh, utilization, maybe something like in the uh, Q4 period, sir, roughly? Uh, uh, I, I couldn't get your question very clearly. Sir, uh, sir what would be the industry ut uh, utilization, uh, capacity utilization in Q4 FY21 uh, for the wagon manufacturers? See, ultimately, we have been, uh, the, if you see the history, wagon manufacturers, the maximum have produced 18,000 wagons in a year. That's what basically is going about. Excepting for one exception here when the, when the production was almost about 19,000 something. But never they have made more than 18,000 numbers. Now, gradually, earlier, in the last couple of years, the capacity utilization was close to only 10,000. It has now gone up to 12, 13,000. And hopefully in the coming years, it will again start looking at 18,000. Once the, that kind of segment emerges, the prices also start showing signs going northwards. I asked you Q4 because, sir, because in the first nine months, the business would have got disrupted uh, due to COVID. -19. That's why I wanted to uh, check with regard to Q4. Are we able to come to around that four to five thousand range uh, as a quarter on annualized run rate? Are we able to come uh, to that normal level? At, uh, Not in this year. Let me be very clear. Not in this year. But yeah, so coming years we are targeting that. So by FY23 we should see, sir. Hopefully, the way the business is going, going and the segment is looking up. Hopefully, we should be targeting that kind of situation. Okay. Uh, the last question from my side. Uh, with regard to our EPC and other construction uh, businesses, so what are the type of uh, kind of credit controls and uh, other controls which you are uh, bringing and implementing in the systems to improve the profitability and uh, smoother execution? Very interesting question. Rather, I was wanting to uh, look forward to reply to this question for anybody coming to. See, earlier when we went into this business, we went into main three segments. Signaling, which was the core strength of the company, ballastless track, and track laying. Track laying is a business where volumes are very large. And of course, we, we wanted to uh, make a top, top line, which is basically uh, commensurate to the size of the company. But execution of those depends on a lot of factors. And it is highly dependent upon what the government policy from time to time remains. We burnt our fingers by coming across the policies of the government, whereby the government has put the, even the mining of the land into a restricted, restricted area, restricted zones, and moreover, the business is totally controlled by the local mafias. So these challenges, we, it came on the surface, we faced it, we realized, and we found that um, maybe this is not our line of business, we being a core competency company, so we'll remain in the core competency area. So this year, if you see, we have not booked any order in real EPC business in respect of track lane. We are focusing signaling, and we have booked almost 300 crore order for signaling in this year. And signaling orders are faster in execution. Money is not blocked. The liquidity is good. Your working capital flow is evenly maintained. Unlike areas where like, we are doing a couple of uh, your track lane contracts, both in both in the segments of uh, export as well as the domestic market. The challenges which you are facing in this respect is Bangladesh, we are doing a major contract. Now, Bangladesh's border is closed. We are not permitted to enter Bangladesh. And it's not happened once. It, last year, it has happened four times. The resultant thing is this thing, our resources, they are idling. They are not able to execute the job properly. The money remains blocked because until unless you reach the milestone, the payments are not being released to you, or even the payments are released at least partly 70%, 30% money remains with them. So this kind of, we see that the working capital blockade is very high, and other divisions of the company start suffering for that. So that is why the strategy wise we are now focusing more on orders, which can be executed faster, and where the side gestation period is comparatively smaller. So that's how we are focusing signaling, AFC, and last less track. Uh, sir, just clarification, sir. Anything quantitative uh, thing can you give on the uh, Bhagesh Jika last question, sir? Like what he asked on the number terms, what we want to achieve in FI22? Uh, you you know, my, my I generally don't predict on all this thing, but it will certainly be better than what we did the previous year. That means uh, year 1920. Also in terms better. of margins, sir, uh, margins also will be better. Margins uh, certainly it will improve compared to what we have been doing. 
it will improve because the demand segment has positive. Sure, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sham Sundar Sriram from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm, uh, hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, the, thanks for taking the question, sir. Uh, sir, just uh, one uh, additional question. I think my uh, colleague uh, asked quite a few uh, points, and uh, thank you for the, all those clarifications. Just one additional question, sir. As we look into F22, the fiscal year 22, sir, from a vegan production perspective, uh, and uh, uh, for, for, for the railways, do we see this 10, 11,000 number of vegan production a year going meaningfully up to 15, 16,000 this year itself, or we think uh, it, it, will not, it will be at the same 10, 11,000? Uh, vegans a year. What is? What are your thoughts, sir? Uh, if you if you want my gut feeling or my uh, limited knowledge in this field, which basically I could gather from this thing, my instinct says it will be closer to that. Okay. Okay. This is is this because of this two months lockdown, etc., or is this the general uh, ordering momentum? Is that the, that phase? Uh, got me wrong. Um, my 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 response was basically it will closer to out. 14,000, 15,000. So it will still see the increase. Okay. Okay. In spite of the non closures and all this thing, the demand is such, it will see an increase. Understood, sir. Understood, understood, sir. Um, thank you very much, sir. I'll call back immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of course of Bhubna from Where Enterprises. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Sorry, I missed uh, the initial part of the call. So I apologize in advance if I'm repeating something. Uh, so I basically wanted to understand very bluntly. Wanted to ask, uh, a lot of money is being infused into the company at these price levels. Uh, so I wanted to understand, you know, uh, how much of this infusion is going towards debt repayment and working capital management versus how much of it is uh, more towards the promoter's bullishness on the business going forward. Could you explain what you know? Uh, you guys are so uh, bullish about going ahead in like the different verticals and just extend that properly. Sure. See, Textaco is a flagship company on the globe, and one of the premier engineering companies which has withstand all the onslaughts which has happened to engineering industry in India, especially in the Eastern zone, and one of the very few engineering companies which survived all the turmoils during 60s, 70s, 80s, and has emerged stronger over the years. Promoters has tremendous confidence in the company and in the basic USP of the organization. So promoters have analyzed and found it convincing that, yes, company needs liquidity for the reason that because we went into a business of rare EPC, Kalindi, where the deployment of working capital was substantially larger than what we could have anticipated. Due to the reason of COVID and other factors emerging and all this thing, and last year we are incurring certain losses and all this thing, banks were also not coming so favorably to increase the limits. They were restricted lower limits to the whatever limit levels were there. And we have to bring in some money to make sure that the working company is not getting impacted. So promoters decided to put in almost about 170 to 200 crore rupees in the company. And that is how, if you see last year, the window available to promoters to go ahead by infusing capital by way of preferential allotment to the promoters. We utilized that window. So initial window was for when by the time the permission and all came, we put in 79 crores, but due to technical reasons that balance money could not be brought in to that particular time limits. So we have to go again for that thing. We went again, but some of the fellow shareholders, they thought the promoters are enriching themselves with additional equity of the company by and not giving opportunity an option to the other in the other other investing public to participate in this thing and in general we got a feel that they are looking more for a right issue than for promoter getting for a professional allotment only so promoters uh, the feedback promotion promoters uh, duly analyzed and they have very generously agreed to the suggestion and in the last board meeting they approved to go ahead with the right issue up to an extent of 175 crores that, of course, the quantum will be decided by the capital committee, which has been formed for the purpose. And once they meet, they decide the size and all this thing will be coming with the, with the right issue 
very soon in the market. So that's how promoters talk. Why the confidence promoter is there? Because the segment is looking, as I explained in my initial phase, you might have missed it, that point. We have mentioned that how the railways are targeting to increase the volume of the trade. I didn't mention that one thing also, the railway target today is from 29% market share of freight to increase to 50% market share. And they also want to move the traffic from 1.1, 1.2 billion today to 3 billion by 2030. So this all segment looks for that the railway requires these products. The railway has to move the cargo through some means. And they require so this, would, this would benefit your rolling stock division, right? That's, that's right. And in the, the EPCA, in the last question, my your fellows from Sundaram, when they asked me, I clearly answered to them also this, what we are planning for EPC. We are going at more in the niche segment, which is basically signaling, AFC, and ballastless track, and not focusing ourselves on track laying, which is high volume, but it is unpredictable. And involvement of working to become very large. So we have accordingly decided that, yes, our focus will be in a different zones. Okay, that's nice, but... Uh... Wanted to so so if you include conversion of loan to equity, preferential and rights issue, uh, which is the series of events which have taken place, right, one after another, what is the total dilution which is taking place, or would it be expected uh, to take place? I really don't know what is the size of uh, your right issue will be, but as I told you, 79 crore already induced in the capital. 175 is the board approved maximum limit for right issue. Depends on capital companies and what size they will like to come with. But apparently, it looks like minimum 200 crore company will be getting out of this. Include, okay. Okay, and, and also, two, so two more questions. One on your receivables. So, could you just explain what the 600 crores receivable, could you break up uh, who are these receivables from, the 600 odd crores, and what the status is, confidence of receiving the money, and what the reality of the situation is? See, most of these debtors are basically from government parties. So the confidence level of the company that way is is quite good. Some of the some of them are also from the large private sectors, especially the big conglomerates. And there, for one other reason, the payments, because mostly payment is, is stuck in our EPC business. Otherwise, in other businesses, all this payment cycle is it's generally good, and in bag industry, payment cycle is basically maintained reasonably by all the all the players, whether be it the railways, be it the private sectors. So that some payments are there. That disputes uh, that that challenges they we face in respect of final realization. As I mentioned initially, that 30 percent of the payment comes from the milestone achievement, and the gap between them. That is the way where we get our money gets stuck. We are working on that direction. So two two specific uh, areas we attack. Number one. By not going into the track laying work, we are reducing the volume of our unbilled revenue. And by making sure that as we are taking the smaller value contracts, completing in time and getting out of this, we are also reducing our debt liability. So basically, if you see today, my debt and all these things size wise, it has not grown up. It's, it's in spite of all this difficult period of COVID, people not being paying and all, my debt is limits are almost at similar levels. You know, a lot of people are certainly going down. Sorry, what? My debt debtors level is almost the same level, their inventory level has yeah. also gone down. So you know a lot of people who track your a lot of analysts who track your company uh, and the sector of the opinion that this DFCC increasing freight traffic, etc. through rail story has been going on for years, but it hasn't really benefited the company in any way. So what do you have to say to that or about that? The main reason we explain to you basically again. The business is such, especially the track line thing, where basically only the large, larger players, small, they be sustaining who are doing the civil work together along with this thing. We are not in the civil work. And we are facing challenges in respect of whether we, the, for one or the reason, if any any particular uh, constituent is not able to complete or fulfill his obligation, we are getting stuck and our money gets stuck. And we are not so today comfortable situation whereby we can deploy unlimited uh, what the upgrade to the project and wait for this thing and go against claims and all these things. So that's not the policy of the company. Accordingly, we have decided in such kind of uh, projects, we will take lesser interest and we will more focus on the uh, areas where competencies are good and we can get out very faster. So this is the trend change which we have taken taken the same principal decision from this year. 
Yeah, no, I was trying to understand more on the rolling stock division. On the rolling stock division, which you were saying would benefit from uh, increased freight traffic, right? You were saying. Uh, could you explain a little bit as to when that will actually start showing in your numbers and how so? I, I answered that question when uh, the query came from SDSC. I answered that in detail. Okay, so I'll go back to that. Okay, great. Great, right. thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishit Shah from Equitas Investment. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Most of my questions are answered. Sir, I just wanted to understand post Q4, are there any significant order wins in any of our division? Significant order intake? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mark, can you answer? Uh, post, uh, you, your question is post Q4. I, I'll answer that. Uh, don't worry, Ahmed. Uh, post Q4, we have been able to book orders in wagon segment. Almost about, we have booked orders for uh, 400, 400 wagons in wagon segment. And in respect of rail EPC, we have booked order for about 180 crores in signaling division. In uh, my electrification, we have booked order for almost about 30 crore rupees, but that is basically in the new segment of refurbishment and maintenance, which is normally high yield return, and that is where the focus of the company is today. So that is there, there we have booked those orders. In foundry and all things, we are booking regular orders for export and all this thing as is, but there is nothing which is basically significantly any big jump or go down. The positive thing is this thing in foundry, we are now approved for supplying to defense, and we are supplying to naval. The large castings, casting weighing up to 22, 23 tons, individual castings. We are supplying to Neville, and we have been well received, and that is, that is comparatively better remuneration which we get on that. So that's how basically the order should change, and we are comfortable with this thing. The inquiries are many. We are working on them selectively also, and also basically going in the area because our competency is mainly in the specialized wagons. And that is the area where we are really focusing upon certain new developments as well. And we will also cover this point in our concluding remark. Thank you. Division, what would be our capacity utilization? Uh, if you truly see capacity, we, we have capacity to build 7,000 wagons also. But then it depends upon what kind of types of wagons we get and what types of wagons in, in a particular run we get. So these are very flexible ones. But today, roughly, we are, if you see on an average uh, with the mix of all the wagons and all these things, we are running hardly at 60%. Yeah. Uh, and sir, I want a clarification. So uh, you said 625 crores is the order book for wagon segment. And Indian Railway is 275 crores out of this, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And sir, lastly, can you give me dispatch number for wagons for the quarter? Uh, yeah, for quarter four, the total number of wagons. Hemant, will you please speak out? Yeah, yeah sure, sir. So for quarter four, uh, the total wagon dispatch was around 550 wagons, of which uh, uh, railways uh, railways were 300, and the balance was for Friday. Okay. Hello. Yeah, sir. I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the next question is from the line of Dinesh Kotecha from Crick. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, good morning to all of you. Uh, sir, falling failure is not falling down but lying down. And you have said that you have got uh, the resilience to sustain and survive and go in the last seven decades. Now, my question is, I mean, uh, going ahead, what are the likely bumps that you're going to face and what is your strategy to growth? And can you give me a spot of failures actually? And what is being done internally to uh, avoid that now? Uh, we will we will we'll cover this in our closing statement in general. We will not we cannot be very specific. You know pretty well these questions, but we will certainly cover in our conclusion complete remarks. What is the vision for the company? And sir, about the rights, I mean, what is the rights? The price that you are going to be fixed. Rights section that capital committee decided on this thing. But the size of rights capital will not be more than 175 crores. Um, that is where the the rights are working on this thing. Uh, the rights section is the rights section. Would you like to add something on this? I, I, I mean, I would like to know, you know, what is the internal activity of cost reduction that you are now uh, focusing on? 
Yeah, that is basically as the MD explained in the, his uh, short remark in one of the questions, an answer to one of the questions, that we are working both on improvement in our utilization of the material, so better better uh, planning for utilization so that the wastages are reduced dramatically. Second thing, our component manufacturing and other areas where we are can be improvised whereby the cost can be reduced instead of depending on the outside sources. If from the spares or of the scraps which are emerging out, we can cut, uh, prepare those components and all this thing, and in-house we can do that thing. And also, that improving the technology whereby rework on the these uh, wagons are totally stopped, or rather fabrication what we do is totally stopped. And certainly that all depends upon the quality improvement, which is the core area of focus of the new team. Thank and you. The and the recovery of the stuck up beds, I mean, how, how is the progress going on there? Yeah, that also explains the last question. The recovery of debt, basically, if you see that my debt level, in spite of difficult times, we have maintained the same, the data has remained the same levels. And gradually and gradually, we are trying to reduce it also. We are working constantly on this thing. Last year, we have been able to reduce our inventories to a large extent. This year, our target is to reduce the debt to a large extent, and that will happen because the moment we start achieving the milestones, the, pay, the debts, debt and unbuilt, both will start coming down dramatically. That is what the focus area for the management is, and that is what management has taken task on its hand. Thank you, sir. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking the last three questions. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Bhota from Principal India. Please, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, good sir, morning. regarding this debt, yeah. Uh, sir, regarding this debt reduction, sir, can you please help? What will be our target for FY22 and 23? X of right. See, ultimately, our target is this: that the debt and unbuilt revenue, it should come down to the level of maximum three months. That is our target. Three months of our turnover should remain between these two items. That is basically we are working constantly on that, and hopefully we'll be able to achieve with the change in the business uh, track which we have now basically decided. Okay, sir. Okay, and sir, uh, regarding this uh, railway ECC, so you have mentioned that there has been some change in the product and all. So two question on that one. Number one, so do we have any ECC? Uh, orders so that is going to again hamper FY22 or 23. And second, with uh, the change in the product mix and all, so what can be the reasonable margin and the working capital in that particular sector? Then you come again. The first question I didn't get clearly. Sir, any old orders that uh, uh, that is there in the EPC business which will attract the higher working capital and the low margins? There, there, there is. I must admit. Number one, this question I have divided two parts. One, the legacy contracts, of course, we are we have left them behind, and that's basically only the residual ones, which is basically the final 5% and 2% and 3% like that, things are there, which we are closing down, and this year our target is to at least close 18 contracts. Second point which is there, do we have such contracts, which I was talking about, especially in the track lane? We have. One of the major such contracts is EDFC. The second one is basically Bangladesh. These are two major contracts where we're doing the track lane work and all this thing. So there the challenges are still there, but hopefully once the situation normalizes and the larger value of contract is Bangladesh, where we have substantially large value of contract. So that is what basically will be gearing up and posting our team there. So that, but in case the pandemic remains such, then that can certainly be a challenge in the coming year as well. Sir, I am just talking about uh, the uh, as and when the things will become more uh, normal. Sir, uh, by when sir, yeah, we can, how, how, get... by domestically we are not we are closing down all the contracts. The one contract with EDFC also will close in this year. This apart few smaller uh, which remaining things are there. We are targeting to close within this year. The only thing which remains large value is Bangladesh, and where if the pandemic situation is not there, certainly we'll be able to move faster because Bangladesh working compared to the uh, Indian Indian condition, all these things like mining and all the restrictions and all, are not there at this point of time. So hopefully that will not be a big challenge. And uh, if the sites are available to us, we should be able to do. But that is uh, going to be completed in the next two years' time, this year and next year. So by 23, we should be able to complete that contract as well. And so, uh, that particular contract, Bangladesh, as you correctly mentioned, is a large order. But that will pull down our working capital and the and the margins so whatever good work we are doing actually in the remaining part of an EPC that will be not only, Bangla, not only Bangladesh, Bangladesh I think will be able to regain a lot because basically they have delayed the contract because they've changed the design. As a result, our resources have idled there and the cost we already booked. So those things I think will be able to get the adequate compensation of them. 
but it is basically in general in all this uh, track lane contract this typical problems are being faced if anybody any constituent of the contracts in the overall system of things are not able to do their job we get stuck if the bridge is not made we get stuck if the land is not filled we get stuck if the land is not basically stabilized we are stuck for one other reason we are getting stuck so that is the way they may be problem as far as signaling and electrification is concerned these problems are not there because we are going on a developed uh, developed uh, sites which are already tracks are already laid are work done bridge is done then only we come into uh, picture so that kind of situation basically helps us and that is the focus of company now we have realized and we are accordingly changing the business track on that correct sir so you have mentioned in your previous answer so, so uh, my question uh, last question is on the etc business with our new uh, the focus focusing on the uh, electrification and signaling so what can be the margin so that we can expect from that particular vertical and what will be the working capital if we stick to the signaling and the electrification part Uh, I don't. Uh, you know that I don't speak about margins in this because this is a forward-looking statement. I restrain myself from saying anything. But the segment there are four competencies there, which are three which I analyzed to you, of which two are about four competencies, and third we are developing the four competencies. In secondly, it's a it's a niche business area. We certainly have better margins. In your dustless track, we are, we are the leader in the segment. As a result, we are able to uh, get reasonably good size business and large businesses and all these things. the margin is normally other than the some variation here and there is reasonable over there that we don't face much challenges the margin there and as is the new field which we are getting into we have done couple of jobs and now we are also getting to export this segment into big where major part is supply lesser part is the basically site working and all so think this i hope that with these three segments working together certainly the margins of the uh, rail etc division will look up and in electrification as i mentioned our focus today is now getting into the more to refurbishment and maintenance which anyway compared to the new supplies are the higher margin business so that's how we feel that yes we'll be able to attend to the margins also the challenge which we face in margin also will be able to attend correct so my last question is that the industry leaders uh, those who are doing the signaling etc and electrification work they are doing an ebitda margin of 10% and working capital net working capital days of 90 days so uh, are we near to those metrics uh not near to that our margins are certainly better in uh, in electrification we have been working at ebitda margin of 14 to 17% depending upon how, uh, how what kind of business we have done during the year in even a way in the uh, your calling segment we have been working at ebitda margin of 13 to 17% of course over the period we have margins have gone down and because of work capital involvement to a large extent uh major portion of that is eaten up by the interest tax segment that is the focus is this thing the how to reduce that working to burden and as i mentioned my data is unveiled we will try to bring our targets to bring them down to three months level which will certainly make me rotation my working up to much faster and resultant thing is this thing my cost on interest certainly will go down and that way my net margin will improve on that yes, sir. So, so so as you clearly mentioned that we are targeting like Three months working capital for the entire company, so that will also be. I think it's almost working capital. Basically, I was talking about unbuilt and this thing. And real estate, basically, there is no inventory. So, for sure, real estate is correct, but in case of brick and mortar, this is not correct. Okay, okay. So that was helpful, and uh, hope so you can conduct the call on this uh, on a regular basis, so that we can have a connection and the continuity. Yeah, my MD also wants that, so I'll do that. Thank you, sir, and best wishes for upcoming calls. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arvind Joshi from Battalion Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, you answered my question, which I'm going to ask in some parts. I just wanted to have a more broader and long-term understanding of your thought process. Uh, what has been the learning from the tumultuous year we have we just spent uh, encountering the COVID issue, the pandemic issue? A lot of companies have. we invented themselves from this pandemic any learning that we can share with us and also highlight how we can transform ourselves in that and any new strategic positioning that are going to emerge because of these experiences i just wanted to understand and that and how will we enhance our competitive positioning based on our past learning thank you and all the best a very good question rather when especially to the to our kind of company this is a very very pertinent question 
we as as initially i mentioned that we are a 82 year old company and with being a 82 year old company we are basically considered to be a traditional company laggard in certain aspects and not induced to the modern technique and all those things but with our younger team which is there in place today and the, we first time we learned that today we can in fact rather i go into background we were having offices and corporate office separate and uh, plant office separate working from corporate office working from city and the plant office working for plant and then we decided that okay this is not very fruitful and effective if the plant offices and the corporate office are combined together in the plant itself the efficiency will improve and the decision making process will certainly go much faster and that is how we did sometime in 80s now today i realizing that everything is locked down there has been situation whereby people are not able to attend to office the transport facilities and all these things are curbed by the government regular restrictions are being brought in and still we are able to work very effectively and today work from home is normally becoming a culture now our kind of company as well so which is very very interesting and this is the first learning we had it is not necessary that the officers should be very close to the play place where we work we can work from anywhere it is more important thing the strategy and planning we should be done and that can be very well done from the way we are now doing for last one one year more than one year rather now it is 13 14 months so that is what basically learned second thing we learned about this thing that we our production process was such where we were targeting that we cannot get into production lines until unless we have make sure that all the my jugans are properly manned all my materials are properly available at site and all this thing and then the production line starts like assembly line today we have changed if one jugan is not working we skip that jugan get into next jugan work this thing we working with a smaller group of people to make sure that at least some operation goes on in spite of restrictions and all <coughs> i'm sorry and all the kind of bottlenecks which are being faced by us due to this restriction covid and, and uh, various government restriction whereby my component suppliers and all facing challenges some tick bit items for which the earlier the person used to stand still and all thing we are doing in house making sure that if something is not come adopt in innovative way do it in house and make sure the production line keeps going on all these things so these are the new learnings which we have brought and this certainly is going to make company much more strong and strengthen in the coming period and this certainly will add a lot of value to the organization basically thank you thank you thank you so much and all the very best to you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen this will be the last question which is from the line of deepak rajni an individual investor please go ahead yeah good afternoon i have a quick question on the rights issue uh this is the second time you have announced the rights issue uh, i'm just trying to understand why is it that you haven't yet set out the terms of the rights issue uh my colleague will answer to you in detail about this ravi i think this is question you should attend yeah thank you sir so well, uh, well i would like to address some query on the right issue see the right issue terms the board has approved a limit has been already approved the board has approved up to an extent of rupees 175 crore now they have left the option to the capital issue committee to decide the terms condition including pricing based on the situation which the committee will take a call and accordingly the information will be made available to the public and the stock exchanges as well so i understand that my question is you guys announced the right issue in the this is the second time the same announcement has been made you have announced the right issue in the past is been aborted for reasons best known to your to y'all subsequently you all announced another rights issue and then we are hearing a rather bureaucratic answer that there be a capital committee why couldn't the capital committee meet and then decide the terms what are you all uneasy about as you all are unable to sell 200 crores worth of paper what is the diffidence about yeah well, i'll answer this question ravi i'll answer this question yes see your answer to your first question is very clear the last time we have very openly and clearly disseminated the information that the board couldn't uh, the company couldn't go ahead with the right issue for the reason that the approval from the nsc was uh, sorry uh, bsc took its much longer and finally we could get the approval only on 26th of september where the issue the opening of issue was not possible to do within 29th of september till last day so resulted thing is this thing that that you have to withdraw and we went for further since that money company required liquidity much faster 
the promoters came forward and said that we are willing to put in the money by way of a preferential allotment. And that is how we went for preferential allotments. Once that approval came, promoter put in 79 crore rupees. The balance, balance thing, because the technical reason couldn't come in that point in time, we went again so that the last year itself, the preferential allotment money could come. Some of the shareholders were not very comfortable with that. The, the opinion of the general shareholders was this thing that instead of preferential allotment, it should be a right issue. And as a result, they didn't pass the resolution at that point in time. And getting the feedback, we put in the last meeting about this thing. The capital government certainly meet, but you know, pretty well, times are difficult and all these things. People are not in the site. There is a complete lockdown situation. Immediately post lockdown, that's why it is open up. Our capital committee will meet and will come forward because we want it to come very fast. Sir, I completely appreciate what you're saying. And uh, kindly bear with me. My question, you just, uh, you, know, you or your colleague just spoke a couple of minutes ago about how you are well adjusted to working from home right now. The lockdown certainly can't be a reason why uh, senior management can't decide the terms of the rights issue. That is not something that needs to be met at, you know, at, at, you know, at, at a physical environment there. My, you know, the short point is that having had an aborted issue, one would expect that the management would be prepared and be, be ready with terms rather than announce that you are raising 175 crores and then a capital committee, a committee is going to meet to decide the terms of the issue. I mean, it just I, mean, about I, I, I need to, I need to, I need to intervene yeah, in yeah, this. Sir, I think because, have, because, sir, because uh, you know, you know, uh, no, no, correct, correct. You see, no both sides on the term. A 80-year-old multi-decade-old company that is struggling to raise 175 crore rupees, or maybe are not struggling. Certainly, it appears like that. You know, when if, if over a period of, uh, you know, little over a year, you all have, you know, you all have announced an issue for one or the other reason, not being able to fulfill it. Sir, the capital market is functioning seamlessly through the lockdown. People are raising capital, IPOs are happening, all kinds of stuff is happening. You know, you guys are taking more than a year to raise a sum of 200 crore. No, 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 I, I, I don't, I don't uh, take your argument and it is not a uh, well-conceived argument you are making. Please try and appreciate and understand what I explained to you. Sure, this, sure. this, this uh, one minute, this has been approved by the board on the meeting of 14th of May. Unfortunately, immediately thereafter, complete lockdown was there. It is a disruption. Please appreciate and all this thing. We certainly are going to organize the capital committee meeting to make sure the terms are finalized and issued to this thing. But disruption. We have to now basically first finalize our uh, your merchant banker, then the legal entity and all this thing. We have already finalized the legal entity. Merchant banker, we are in the process of finalization. That also will be finalized within maybe by early next week. Immediately thereafter, they will set the terms and all this thing, which will put to capital committee, and capital committee will make sure on that basis. It is not that the same terms and condition which we last time was put will be acceptable to shareholders. Shareholders would certainly like that this time and the next time again we are coming with this issue, that terms and all should be slightly different than what this thing. Then what will the pricing? These all things need to be worked out and accord decided. We are not taking much of time. But of course, there can be a couple of weeks' time which we will require to do these activities, which we certainly are all working on this thing. And I don't think your uh, basic, basic approach to this thing that the company is struggling to raise is correct. If the shareholders were not willing to allow company to raise through the promoter's preferential holding, that's certainly a priority of shareholders. But then doesn't mean that the company is not in the position to raise the money. The process was different. Uh, I'm not saying that you're not in the position to raise money. All I'm pointing out to you is that it has been, in, it's been, I don't know, 15 months. I don't know how long the specific period of time. It's been inordinately long. And the company has been unable to conclude a capital raising. An activity that any other company, any other reasonable company, man, you know, that, that part of the, of the, you know, of financial activity has not been impacted by the, by, 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 by the pandemic. All I'm trying to say is that shareholders, minority shareholders have been, you know, the outcomes that we've been, you know, we've been living with for multiple years. There is, there has been a, I mean, extremely poor financial performance, therefore extremely poor return, you know, uh, metrics. For, uh, for minority shareholders. And in whatever your argument may be, sir, the cold facts are that it has been more than a year and the financial ca the, the, the capital raising is, has not been concluded. And my short point was, given the, the, the problem of the previous episode, I would have thought that you would have been prepared and come with a capital raising plan with, with all aspects covered. Not a capital raising plan is announced, and then you will go and decide the terms. Sir, you 
I can people are again, again. I, I, we are both pulling in the same direction. I have to, I have the same interest that you have, which is to see the company do better. But I am struggling to understand how you don't see the message that you're giving the capital market by taking one year to raise two hundred crore rupees. See that one year. Understand there's a message going out to investors at large that uh, you know, I mean, a, a multi-decadal company cannot sort out its capital requirements in 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 over long periods of time. And I urge you to take this, you know, constructively and try and change, and you know, the, the messaging that they're giving the, the market. It's not a, it is not a coincidence that the, the stock price is languishing. It is these actions that are causing, you know, this kind of price behavior. So kindly, Rene, one minute, one minute. I think, I think, I think you are uh, what you are subject you are going about. You are not trying to appreciate and missing. You are harping on that one year, fifteen months, and all those things. Company has come, come out. Very clearly, every time, why it has not happened, and those are basically technical reasons which today where we have company management has no control. Please appreciate and all these things. This time, what you mentioned, correct? Our board never decides about the terms and all these things. The board basically first principally has to approve whether they are willing to permit to us to go ahead with the capital issue. They have permitted us on 14. 14 immediately thereafter. We, I told you that lockdown, so they're a little upset on the working and concern and all this thing. We are already in the meantime finalized the legal advisor for this issue. We are also working on the merchant banker. Immediately we'll finalize the merchant banker in the coming week itself. And thereafter, terms will be put to capital committee and get it approval done and come to the market. So please appreciate. I do understand that what your, your, your pains, I understand. If the market is languishing, the share price is not giving good return to the shareholders. Certainly, there is a pain. Sorry, I, I agree. That is not that. That pain is there. I'm not denying that. But that pain is not something that you are responsible for as an executive team. I'm saying something else, sir. I'm just trying to. I hope you get the, a constructive message from what I'm saying. There is a signal, you know, sir. When you there is a signaling that you know of efficiency or lack thereof. When you conceive a plan and execute it in a timely manner. And when that does not happen for long for a long period of time, the market perceives it in a certain way. You must take that signal from the market. Is my point. See, the pain may be caused not is not only caused by the absence of the right issue. The pain is caused by a multiple you know pair of reasons. Other you know pair other competitors are also feeling the pain. I understand that, but I am just I I, I, I appreciate I appreciate your point. Your point is also very taken. I like to. Because I would, I, I owe you an explanation. That is why I gave you that detailed explanation. Fair enough. And fair enough. certainly, it was very important for me. Thanks for and I take enough. your point. I take your point, and we will discuss internally with the management team how fast we can do this thing and come back to you with the, our terms condition for the right issue. Appreciate it. And that was the recording. Verify that the, the date of approval of the board was 15. 15. Oh, so I'm sorry. I I mentioned wrongly. It was 15. Yeah, the last day of our working. Am I correct, Ravi? That was the last day of working when the lockout was declared. We were meeting on Tuesday while the board meeting was on. We got to know about the West Bengal government notification. Yeah, yeah, no. Immediately from the next day. So well, now I think we can move on if there is no question. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, I think all the questions are over. And. It may be the MD would like to say something. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am uh, I am available here. <clears throat> it was uh, very nice to go through all the questions. And more and more the questions were coming. I was thinking that there are most of the questions, have, including the last one. Of course, the gentleman was very agitated, maybe for fair reason. But uh, all these questions only help us to improve and look into various other areas to improve, because that's why we are. We are here to add value to the corporation so that we can all, the shareholders can share, can 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 enjoy the benefit of the same. So uh, uh, some very interesting questions came, and one of the questions I just can't help but uh, addressing to is uh, what you are doing in the lockdown. And I think the lockdown, my way of looking at it, that is allowing the management to innovate more and more and and i think uh, what has really happened that we have been taught we have thought through the various ways to improve what more we could do like for example there is uh, i think vijay has already mentioned is a it's a company which uh, is like human body the engineering companies depends on uh, metal cutting and metal fabrication and no oxygen so how do you operate 
without oxygen. It's a great uh, example of innovation. So it also gives us time to innovate. It gives us time to look at our future. It also uh, is strengthening our internal actions because right now we are on lo lots of internal internal actions and how to improve our efficiency, how to reduce the cost, how we have the best kind of product in the market, how you develop product which is going to be coming in very soon. So how you are actually ahead of the curve and that's where the design teams are working. So these are the various uh, activities which are going on. Uh, maybe we have faltered, like the gentleman just now said, you have faltered, you have not taken your time for uh, deciding how the capital issue should be. Yes, that's an important point. Maybe we haven't done it, but thank you for pointing it out. But at the end of the day, I am I see a very uh, very strong future in the areas where we are working, and we also uh, are our mind is very clear where we should focus instead of being a wall-to-wall -wall carpet. And this, and Vijay has very 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 clearly articulated that where we should be, where we should not be, how we should work in internally, both in the production of rolling stocks, in the foundry, as well as in the EPC contract, where we have completely changing the way we want to work, including the bright power. So uh, so I think, in a nutshell, the, the questions were so good that it gave us more chance to think and, retro and introspect and improve ourselves. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. So anything more, uh, 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 Naresh or uh, Naveen, anything more, or should we? No, thank you very much, Mr. Mukherjee and Mr. Vijay. Ritija, please take over. Thank you very much. On behalf of SKP Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you.